I don't think you touched on the last few questions, the relationship with the Navy Island Administration and Canada yes. and the United Kingdom and the naming of Dr. Simmons as our fifth national hero. I think it's the fifth. It is and the also fifth. the stadium after our um, iconic athlete, Kim Collins. Thank you very much for that reminder. I believe that we have strong public support for the actions that we have taken and our efforts really to create a new culture in the country as difficult as cultural changes are to come you have to start somewhere and one of the area about which we had been concerned had been the willful exclusion of people on account of their political affiliation and in that regard for a very long time a significant proportion of the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis were concerned, our citizens were concerned, that of all the national heroes, all of them being politicians, the man who had successfully brought independence to the country and had gone on to serve it for some 12 consecutive years, successive years thereafter, was not given his due honor. <coughs> Sorry, we took a decision this year to base on the support that had come because, in fact, the recommendation came from the people to the National Honors Awards Committee. And that committee unanimously approved the recommendation that the Right Honorable Dr. Kennedy Simmons be considered a national hero. The National Heroes Act required that the Prime Minister, if he finds favour, should forward that nomination to the Governor-General. I did this in consultation with the Cabinet, and I was able to announce that Dr. Kennedy Simmons is now the fifth national hero of St. Kitts and Nevis, and therefore he has joined an illustrious group of our citizens that form the pantheon of national heroes. In a similar manner to Kim Collins, had not been treated well, at least that was the perception of a majority of persons in St. Kitts and Nevis. He is still our most outstanding sports personality, and we took a decision early in the life of Team Unity to rename the Jubilee Stadium in his honor. Again, another fine job by the government. In terms of the relationship, between the federal government and the Nevis Island Administration, I would say it has been a wonderful working relationship. The federal administration has benefited from the presence of the Premier in the Cabinet and the Foreign Minister in the Cabinet, and Nevisians, of course, have benefited. <laughs> we provided them, as we committed in our manifesto, budgetary support of some $10 million dollars and subsequent to that, we provided additional budgetary support of $5 million to bring the sum to date to $15 million. We see also that the country has been able to benefit from the experience and knowledge of Nivisions at home and abroad. So, for example, as our ambassador to the OAS, we have uh, Dr. Everson Hall, who is there as a deputy in our consulate in Dubai, we have a Mrs. Ambrister. As a special advisor in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we have Lorna Hunkins. So we are seeing a greater participation and the country is benefiting in large measure from the greater cooperation, cohesiveness, team spirit that now abounds between the government and people at the federal level and the government and people at the level of the Nevis Island Administration and the island of Nevis. Well, Prime Minister, we are out of time. I want to thank you so much for being our guest today on the inaugural show of Working For You. I am sure the listeners received a lot of information about how their government is working. I was your host, Les Roy Williams. And remember, this government 
is for and by the people, a government working for you.